are here with Road Warrior Animal, the WWE Hall of Famer himself in Wilmington, California at the PCW Ultra Show. And one question I wanted to ask him tonight was, uh, I know he's very close to Larry the Axe Henning. What do you think of his passing? You know, man, uh, I, I remember when Kurt died and Larry and I were sitting there and Larry would just was crying saying, you know, a son should never leave before his father. And Larry was, because all the guys from that area, from Robinsdale High School area in Minnesota, and even if you weren't from that high school, we all worked out together at the same gym. So he was, he was like all of our dads, you know, because every one of us liked, you know, we loved Larry the Axe Henning, you know. And, you know, and then I got to get in the ring with him and wrestle him a few times. And, man, let me tell you something. He was, he was probably the original road warrior, bro. He was brutal. He gave me that double axe handle one time, and I thought my neck was like this, you know, like a, like a neckless man after a while. He shoved my traps down into my waist. But, man, Larry Henning, what a great guy. You never hear anybody say anything bad about Larry Henning, a top-notch professional. True one of the great pioneers of, of pro wrestling, man. It's a shame. It's a shame. My heart goes out to his family, man. I, I text his son, Joe Henning, today, you know, Kurt, Curtis Axel. Actually, yesterday, Curtis Axel. And uh, I gave him my condolences. You know, I mean, I've known Joe Henning since Joe was 10 years old. You know, so uh, very, very great. Good family, man. And he was involved in that big riot in uh, Indiana, wasn't he, that you guys Yeah, had? man, when we tied Kurt Henning in the ropes, we were wrestling Kurt and Baron Von Raschke, and Larry came down to make the save, and uh, yeah, we got in a fight with about 30 people in the stands that day. And I noticed on Facebook you've been making some posts that you might be a good talent scout for WWE. I noticed you've been watching the matches here tonight. Are you always just looking for talent, giving them advice, or...? You know, man, I, I think you know there's a lot of great companies, whether you're in the U.S. or Canada or no matter where you're at. There is no really such thing as an indie company anymore. They're just small companies. And what you see with Ring of Honor growing and uh, the NWA coming back and... You know, I, I was just on an AWL show that was on, on Fight TV, and uh, this show here, PCW, is on Fight TV, and everybody's on Fight TV now, so they're getting another outlet for shows to be known. And there's a lot of great talent around here. You don't have to go through the WWE or, or um, you know, their training center down there to be a great talent in this wrestling business, man. I mean, look, Hawk and I never went through it, and we did just fine. A lot of other people went through it, and they, they were just fine, too. So there's a lot of great talent out there, man, and now it's all about getting that talent out there to get the fans around the country to see this talent. That's the important thing, man. Without TV, nobody knows who you are. So it's important to get them out there. You know, I, I got a, my lawyer owns a company called Glory Pro Wrestling in uh, St. Louis. So I go around the country on behalf of his company looking for talent to bring into St. Louis. So, man, it, it's great to see that the wrestling business is finally going back to basics and going back to old school style. And you are on Facebook, uh, Joseph Michael Laurinaitis, I believe. And I changed it though. Now it's no. just Joseph Laurinaitis. Okay. Yeah. And then I got my uh, yeah my Twitter handle, which is uh, RW Animal, and uh, I'm at Water Rush Pod for my Water Rush podcast and everything else. And so you, if anybody wants to book me, book me, they can contact me there on Messenger on Facebook, or you know you contact Glory Pro Wrestling or at Water Rush Pod. Or, you know, get a hold of uh, bookforwrestlers.com, too. You can get a hold of me there. Now, have you seen any more uh, tag teams since that shoot interview we did a few years ago that's up for free to people to look at that you know, could possibly man, follow in your footsteps? I don't know. It, listen, it's so hard. Just like you can't redo the funks and you can't redo some of like the Bushwhackers and the Road Warriors were like veered as the best team of all time. So... I don't know if there's anybody that's going to be able to follow the footsteps of Road Warriors. There's a lot of great tag teams out there, but there's always, there's not two bigger guys. There's always one little guy, one guy out of shape, or one short guy, one tall guy. So, and even the tag teams today, they're trying, I see WWE's trying to make the tag team division better, but it's still, if you ask the fan, it still kind of stinks. Last question here, because I know you got to get back in there. Uh, you were one of the highest paid wrestlers ever in Japan, I think, you and Hawk, uh, huge legends in Japan. I just did a New Japan tryout this week. Uh, how do you think I would do if I were to get a, a New Japan contract? Bro, let me tell you.
tell you something. First of all, you'd probably be the biggest guy in New Japan working for him. That's for damn sure. And the whole thing about New Japan is, and anywhere in Japan, is going out there and taking it what you want. Because the Japanese boys, as you know, they're just not going to hand it over to you and give it to you. So you got to go take it. And Hawk and I didn't take liberties, but we let them know loud and clear we're here to do business. And once you establish that, you want to do business, then they respect you. So, Devin, no doubt in my mind, you would do great in New Japan. And finally, could we get a uh, water rush to end this off? Sure, man. At the end of the day, when you get to see Rotor Animal, oh, what a rush.